Barton-on-Sea has a long history. It is thought that early man hunted and fished here for thousands of years. The cliff top and beaches as we think of now were once the north bank of the Solent River. So for many years Barton-on-Sea has been known for flints and fossils. Examples of these are on display in the Red House Museum in Christchurch and the Ashmolean Museum. The name Barton derives from the age of the Jutes and the Saxons, and in translation means Beorma's farm. For many years, Barton-on-Sea was a fairly lawless place. Smuggling was prevalent right along the Hampshire coastline, and in Barton-on-Sea it was no exception. The smugglers, despite popular misconceptions, were ruthless and organised criminals that preyed on the local population. There were pitched battles between the smugglers and local law enforcement in our area. There were frequent beatings, deaths and murders. Goods such as tobacco, brandy, tea and silks were smuggled from the continent in fast, well-armed ships. If they managed to outrun the law, they would make to land at local spots such as Chewton Bunny and Beckton Bunny. The goods were taken through the forest. They were hidden at places like the Cat and Fiddle in Hinton, also to the Queen's Head in Burley and the small local village at Sway. Heavily armed, the smugglers would protect their goods with violence and threats. Sometimes these encounters ended up in violent exchanges, such as the Battle of Milford Green in either 1785 or 1786, also recorded that there was a battle in Mudderford in 1784. The violence continued until the government reduced tax on goods. This meant that smugglers would no longer make profit. Hostilities between England and France meant that the Royal Navy took charge over the waters. A local Coast Guard service was introduced. In 1823, the first Coast Guard premises was built on the cliff top. Later in 1868 a new station was built. Cottages for seven men and an officer were constructed. This is what the buildings look like today. Eventually law and order returned. The effort from the Indian servicemen in World War I is sometimes overlooked. At the outbreak of the war as part of the British Empire Indians pledged £100 million and 1.3 million men to the cause. As the Indian army fought on the front line, so the casualties soon mounted up. In areas all around the south coast, such as Brockenhurst, Bournemouth and Brighton, the wounded would be sent to hospital. When the soldiers' conditions improved, they would be sent to convalescent homes. The army commandeered several hotels in the Barton-on-Sea area such as the Grand Marine Hotel and the Barton Court Hotel for use as convalescent homes. Also, a hutted camp was built on the land now occupied by the Cliff Crescent building. This is what the land looks like today. As the brave men recovered from their injuries, they were sent back to the front line. The Indian soldiers were well received locally and even had their own club which catered to their needs. Concerts and contests were held in 1915. By the spring of 1916 the Indian soldiers were leaving Europe. Those soldiers that were fit enough were posted to Palestine and Mesopotamia. On the 10th of July 1917 during a large ceremony a granite obelisk was erected commemorating the Indian soldiers. This is the Indian Memorial Obelisk as you see it today. In the local Barton area, the Barton Court estate owned most of the surrounding land, here seen coloured in this map. From 1894 onwards, the breakup and sale of this land allowed Barton to develop into a residential village that we see today. The private house from this estate was converted into a luxury hotel. It was located on the cliff top close to where the Beachcomber Cafe is situated today. 
Along with top class accommodation, the hotel boasted a nine hole golf course, which later became a full course in 1930. Most of the land seen here in this picture has long since eroded into the sea. In fact, only one part of this vast building exists today, the right or eastern wing. You can see here the surviving part of the hotel marked in orange on this aerial photograph. This is how we see what is left of the building today. It is now home to the Barton Court Studios, which offer bespoke one-to-one -one singing lessons, professional recording studio and offers musical theatre classes. During World War I, the hotel was converted into an Indian soldier's convalescent home. Only a small piece of this wonderful building survives. We can only hope that what is left can be saved from the ravages of time. There are some other interesting buildings in Barton-on-Sea, such as the Westcliff buildings. This is how it looks today. Also, the property where Marconi carried out wireless communication experiments was in Barton-on-Sea. The original building no longer exists, but the Marconi stone that commemorates the events was secured in the new property that stands in its place at the end of Station Road. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, hit the thumbs up button and give it a like. Hit that subscribe button and check out the rest of my great videos. Thanks very much.